kind of high stim fucking pre workout that's gonna get your fucking. like your fucking crack at it, you scratch your fucking neck off. It's gonna get you to grow your weak points. No, God! No, God! Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to do a video on weak points. We all have them. We all fucking hate them. We all want them to grow. I have some. You have some. Let's fucking grow them together. Alright? So, I'm going to go through my own personal tips and tricks, cues and things like that that I've used over the years to help me to help maximise muscle growth in these weak points. First things first, but I'm going to have a pre-workout. All right, just quickly, if you reckon that having some kind of high stim fucking pre-workout that's gonna get your fucking, like your fucking crack at it, you scratch your fucking neck off, is gonna get you to grow your weak points, then I'm sorry, but you're kidding yourself. It's not gonna work. It doesn't work like that. So, leads me to my first tip, which is fuel, okay? I'm not gonna get into this too much. I'd rather leave this for another episode. But, and I'm talking about carbohydrates, so, if your glycogen stores are not full, you're going to find it really hard to perform at maximum capacity, okay? So something that I like to do is utilize your cheat meals, your cheat days, whatever your goals are, whatever you do. On that day, try and train on that day or at least the day after to really push all of them dirty carbs into the muscle cell, okay? Another thing personally I like to do is I push all my carbohydrates into my pre-workout, post-workout, and into my dinner. Okay, so I'm pushing all of them carbohydrates around my workout to, to obviously fuel the workout. Really push it into that weaker muscle cell that I find it really hard to grow and to recover on. All right, tip number two. Mobility, flexibility, bro. How many of you guys actually warm up before your session? I'm gonna say about 75% of you don't. I betcha. All right, so flexibility, mobility, super important, all right? Let's use rear delts, for example. Okay, I see this all the time, all right? If you can't get your elbows up and back to squeeze out your rear delt, if you physically cannot get into that position, I see this a lot, all right? You're never gonna target your rear delts, okay? So flexibility, mobility. Even for that one, right? I use the broomstick to warm up my shoulders. Do a front raise behind the head. All right, in this one here, drive my elbows forward. Flexibility, mobility, super, super important, super underrated. Make sure you get on it. All right, guys, tip number three mind muscle connection. Okay, super, super important. If you don't have a good mind muscle connection there, that muscle is never gonna grow, okay? It's all well and good, so for example, let's say you have a really good movement pattern, okay? Let's say shoulder raise. If your movement pattern is really good, if you don't have that mind-muscle connection, if you're not contracting that muscle on the way up and controlling it on the way down, it's never gonna grow, okay? Going back to mobility, this was me, okay? With my chest, all right? I had a shit mind-muscle connection to my chest, for one, because my mobility was shit, okay? So, for the life of me, could not do this, could not push my chest out. I was like this, posture was crap, yeah? Push my chest up, worked on my mobility, opened my chest out. Now, every time I'm doing a bench press, my chest is actually on top. Whatever's on top is working, okay? With a good mind muscle connection. So, chest up, press, and squeeze, and control the weight on the way down, with good mind muscle connection throughout the whole movement, it's gonna fucking grow. All right, so remember that, whatever's on top works best, all right?
Fearless and always fucking away with poor form, poor mind muscle connection. You're not doing anything for your body, right? You're not doing anything for your muscle growth. You're not doing anything for your weak points. So drop the ego. I'm not telling you to train like a pussy. I'm not telling you to drop fuck away off to the bar. And that's not going to build muscle either, all right? Find that balance, okay? You don't have to be hitting one rep maxes, two rep maxes, and whatever all the time. All right, all I'm saying is drop the weight down to a comfortable weight where you have good range of motion, you have good mind-muscle connection, your technique's good, and progressive overload as well is something else I want to touch on, okay? What I mean by that is, so let's use this chest session for example, okay? Let's say I get 90 kilo on the bar, okay, or eight. Just, just an example, okay? So my following chest session that I do I want to aim for a progressive overload, so what I mean by it is I want to hit a, either an extra rep, I want to hit more weight, or I want to hit an extra set. Either one of the three is fine, as long as you're progressing within that lift, with good mind-muscle connection, with good movement pattern, with good technique. While we're here, I just want to talk about the decline bench press for a minute, okay? Now, this exercise gets a really bad rap. I hear it all the time. Don't do decline bench press. Oh, you know, you're shortening your range of motion. For me, personally, I love it because for one, my overall chest, for me, is a weak point, okay? Two, I've got a fucking wingspan of a bloody albatross over here, so I've got a long way to go. Even here, on the decline, yes, I'm shortening my range of motion just a little bit, but coming all the way down, my chest is fully stretched, fully lengthened before it hits my chest. When I drive up and squeeze, because all my weight is behind it, my shoulders are forced back, meaning a better mind-muscle connection to my chest, okay? Super important, especially for me, someone to move. So, if you have long limbs, you're a big fucking long boy, you're an albatross, Whatever, give these a go. Keep, keep them in, trust me. Yes, you may be using the bottom portion of your chest a little bit more because that is what is on top, okay? What you can do as well is you can drive the way up, but push on a bit more of an angle. Instead of pushing straight out, push up on an angle just a little bit. You'll target that mid-range, even a little bit up the chest in there as well. So throw that into your next one, see how you go. Works for me. Next up, I want to discuss prioritize and frequency, okay? These two sort of go hand in hand, okay? Obviously, you have a weak point, you want to prioritize it. Say every second to third day, if it is still sore, if it's still fucking knackered, and you haven't given enough time to rest and recover, I wouldn't recommend hitting it again, okay? Make sure you're giving yourself enough time, usually two to three days, I would say, depending on the muscle group. Personally speaking, two to three days, I should be fine, ready to go again, unless it's something big like legs and back. anything drop it down in the comments if you like this content don't forget to subscribe right guys digital I'm trying to grow this channel a bit so you know I can't do that by myself I need your guys help I've got more content coming out I've got a lot of big long lists that I want to go through I want to keep it fun I want to keep it educational I want to keep it entertaining and um, I'm going to wrap up the rest of this workout so if you guys can follow along keep watching show you guys how I build my chest and uh,